Hey, it's Paul. Hey, today we're going to change the transmission fluid on this Kubota uh, Z975. It's a zero turn mower. We're going to do some work on it and get the, the transmission fluid changed, change the filters. I've already changed the engine oil and the engine oil filter and air filters. Uh, that's pretty simple, but we're going to go over the steps to change the transmission fluid because that requires a few things and if you do it wrong it can be problematic for the transaxle that's hydraulic driven so we're gonna go over that real quick let's uh, go over here and look at the oils and stuff that we need so here's the oil I use Kubota oil uh, it, it did have a different fluid in it to begin with but Kubota did a tech bulletin and changed the transaxle or hydraulic fluid to this 5w40 lubricating oil it's Kubota oil and then these two Kubota filters right there you can read that's K3811-14070 and uh, these are kind of pricey all of this uh, this these filters right here uh, each one alone cost right at $55.42 for the for each one of these little filters and it requires two of them each side gets one filter and then the oil itself costs eight dollars and 95 cents a quart so the total cost to do all of this came out to 153.02 and you can see that's right on the paperwork that's what it cost those are the numbers you can look at them and see the uh cost to take it to the dealership and have them do it it's going to be uh really expensive because it, it takes a couple hours to do it uh, according to them but uh, it doesn't really take that long we'll go over it and I'll show you the steps we're running right off the manual all the torque specs uh, we're going to use a torque wrench but if you don't have a torque wrench uh, some guys they just do it you know kind of tight hand tight not too tight because these filter elements they got little plastic tops on them. They're not, you know, super strong. It's not like a metal bolt. So you just want to get it snug and tight in there, not, you know, not super tight. Kind of like you do do an oil filter, you know, not real tight. So let's get this started. Okay, I apologize if this gets shaky, but this is really the only way to get down in here and show you how to do this. Uh, underneath the mower if you get down here you can bring the oil pan right down in here and we're gonna sorry for the lighting and everything but it's up underneath here and right there let me fix this over. I think you can maybe see right there right there right here is the drain bolt that's the tire a little metal frame rail comes across and there's a drain bolt here there's one identical on the other side uh, in the same place and this is the hydraulic transmission on the right side of the motor so we're going to go ahead and take that out start draining the fluid before we do that we're going to loosen the fuel cap on the right side so it won't hold air in there and it'll slowly drain out we'll go ahead and get the sagas to do that now okay we ran into the first dilemma I'm going to show you what's happening here is the drain plug for this unit on this side you can't get the socket on completely you can barely get it on at an angle but just enough for you to strip it out uh, the lighting here is not the greatest but I'm going to show you I had to close the garage doors because the glare was horrible and then I've got my flashlight here I'm trying to get it situated let me see if I can hold it better right in here you can't get the my glare is even worse what a horrible lighting but right in there you, you can't get it on so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to pull these off on both sides and remove this protective plate that goes across there so I can get to them easily they're just those are uh, let's see. 
those are 14 millimeter screws. The drain plugs themselves are 17 millimeter screws. So let's do that and I'll uh, magically zip it along fast so you don't have to uh, boringly watch me take out those real quick. And let's magically go faster. Good idea where it's at. You get underneath there. That's the biggest battle spot where all these are. This is the actual drain plug right there. So let's see if we can get the, the lighting decent enough under here. It's not blinding you, but also you can see. That's the biggest battle of filming underneath these things. And I have this jacked up on jack stands too, just maybe a two or three inches just to make it easier. Now I'm going to put this 17 millimeter back on. So 17 millimeter. And then we're going to drain this out. She's a little tight. And this pan is real clean. I mean, you I wouldn't, wouldn't eat off of it but it's got no debris or nothing in it. It's pretty clean, because I want to see what the fluid, I want to make sure nothing comes out of this fluid. If it has any debris in it, I want to see it. I bought this used, and you know, uh, sometimes they get used pretty hard, and sometimes they don't. Now that fluid looks kind of milky. I don't know what's been put in there, but we're gonna change that out. For sure. Like maybe it got some water or something in it. All right, well that's drained out. Now we're gonna move this drain pan to where it will let the drain hole drain into it, the little drops. And when I release this filter, uh, it will drain onto it. Now this, I have a 15 16 for this. It's the only thing I have in this 3H drive that will fit it. So this is a 15 16 so We're gonna put that on there and loosen that and let it drain in there. There we go. Not super tight, but pretty tight. Now those are plastic. So you don't want to strip them out, or it'll be a pain to get them out, but it's hard to do one-handed. Yeah, now it's all the way loose. I hope you can see in there. I'm not too shaky on you. It's hard to do with one hand and also reaching in there. Let me see if I can get in here where you can see what I'm doing. Man. So you just take this out. All the fluid's mainly drained out already. And that's the filter element, and that's the hole it goes into. So we'll take that filter element and drain it back down in there. Okay, now we got the filter out. We have the new filter here. So what we're going to do, we're going to put some new fluid on it, and then we're going to torque it down to 13 to 15.2 Newton meters. Uh, that's also 9.6 to 11.2 foot pounds. So we have the oil here. I tried to get this camera where you can see in there good. It's hard to do with the lighting. I got a new filter. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on it right here. New, new uh, transmission oil just on the seal here. Lube it up. Got 
Got it all on my finger. It's okay. I'll get off right now. <laughs> Funny thing is, I have some uh, gloves over there to wear, but I didn't wear them. So, let me close this new fluid up. I'll spill it. I'll reach in here with a rag. Clean this surface real good. Make sure there's no debris in there. Now you can see I'm just going to put the new filter in. And you want to get it. There's a little tube that it slides onto. And once you get it in there, you can, you want to put it on by hand so that you're not cross-threading it. It's kind of tight. Not because it's actually made of the bottom surface, but just the threads are kind of tight on that plastic. So I'm going to take this, and then with this ratchet, we're going to get it down to the, the uh, feel it going in there. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Now let's put the torque wrench that I already have uh, set to the right torque setting. Let's put that on and torque. So different. I'm gonna get a shorter extension. Shows tight enough right there. All right. She's nice and flush. Now, we're gonna put the drain plug back in. All right, so we're gonna put the drain plug back in, and the drain plug is torqued to 5.7 to 8.4 Newton meters or 4.2 to 6.1 foot-pounds. We got the torque wrench already set. It's not very much torque, so. Yeah, that's it right there, it's not very much. So let's go ahead and take a look at this fluid. Yeah, there's some nastiness in there yeah yucky I don't even know what all this is I'm gonna assume condensation and water that got mixed in the filter element itself you can't really tell about those um, so I mean you can look at it and hypothesize it's no good but it's, I'm gonna say by the hours this is, transmission has 240 hours so we're gonna go ahead and be glad to replace this so okay so the next part of this is the bleeder valve let me get the flashlight so you can see in here all right it's actually a bleeder bolt it's a eight millimeter allen or hex or whatever you want to call it but it's right there you can see it down in there i took the tire off so you can see it in here right there with the tire off you can see it right in there barely if it'll focus on the other side it's in the same position as there so it's right here on this side they're like mirror images of each other right in there on that side and then again I took the tire off so you can see it right where it's at right there I'm gonna shine a light down in there and I'll put my hand on it so you can be for sure what I'm talking about so as you're looking it's right <laughs> my fat hand now is in the way if you're looking it 
it's that right there and that's a eight millimeter uh, Allen wrench so let's uh let's get over here and get this side loose because this is a side we've been working on we want to get it loose where we can drain it or I fill it and it can bleed off so we got a big long extension and let me get the eight millimeter hex so I've got the eight mil Allen hex key 3h drive we're gonna do we're gonna get right up in here with my hand and I want to get it in there good and make sure it goes all the way down to the bottom because you don't want to strip this out now see it's in there now you can see it right there it's down in there good seat it all the way to the bottom and now I'll take this try to get some light down in there where you can see and I'll get this down in there and now we'll loosen it this might take some some go-go juice to loosen so I'm gonna set the camera down where you can watch That's tight, real tight. And it's broke loose and coming on up. You don't want to pull it out. You don't have to actually pull it out. Now, we got that out. Now that it's out down there, I left the Allen key in it. Now that it's loose, it will bleed out the air as we're putting the fluid in. So let's put the fluid in. All right, just got the cap off, cleaned up. All the drain plug and the filter is back in. And we got the bleeder loose. So what we're gonna do now is start putting fluid in we start seeing it come out of the bleeder bowl hole right down there and do this just kind of pour it in right here you don't want to overfill this because you have to take some out I went ahead and took the bleeder cap out I want to look at it make sure seal on it's good it's got a good got a rubber seal that goes around it you know make sure that's not broken anywhere so that's good we can put that back in once we see the fluid start to come out of there okay so what i want you to see is right down in that bleeder hole you can see the fluid is slowly starting to come up so when it gets to the top, I'm gonna put this drain hole back in and it's coming up, it's about halfway up to it now. So let me put this cap back in it. Still got fluid coming up there. All right, so we got the bleeder cap put back in and we've topped off the fluid. In case you didn't know, to top off the fluids you use this this right here there's a two little lines and one at the very bottom right here and then one at the above it it's just like a, a half an inch difference right there there's an arrow that comes down it says the minimum which is this bottom one right here and then another one comes down it says the max which is just right there above it you don't want it all the way up in the top of here this is your fill level right in here because as this fluid heats up and cools down, it'll move quite a bit. So if you have it in this area while you're going, it may come up into here. So you want to just fill it up into here. That's your minimum and, ma minimum and maximum. Minimum and maximum. And you check it when it's cold before you do anything. 
So now uh, let's um, let's do the other side, and then um, we have a procedure for uh, ble finishing bleeding out the air and making sure the system's going good. Well, let's do that other side, and then I'll go right into the the uh, bleeding and getting it ready to service. I'm not going to make you watch me do the other side. It's exactly the same as this side, just on the other side of the mower. The filter's in the same spot, the drain hole's in the same spot, everything on the other side. So as the bleeder, I showed you where it was. You have the bleeder for the side we just did here, and the bleeder for the other side is right there. It's just a mirror image. So let's go to do it. Let me get that other side done, and then we'll go into the finishing bleeding procedures. Okay, I stopped uh, changing this other side because I wanted to show you what I found. This is the filters in respect to how they were on the machine. This is, of course, a new filter. This is the right side, and this is the left side, as you can see. You can tell something is not right with this one. I had an issue at some point. I don't know what's going on. Uh, it shouldn't have been... Um, replaced at any time between before now the machine has 240 hours so it's working operating as it should so i don't know what happened there probably something that happened at the factory when it was uh, done uh, but they just got a little crimp in there i don't understand why i would have done that but uh, the fluid that came out of it was just as milky as the other side so i'm glad we're changing it all Again, the machine only has 240 hours, so uh, it wasn't even close to being due. That's due at 300 hours, but now I am definitely glad that I'm going ahead and getting it done. Let me continue so we can go into the bleeding procedures once everything's changed and filled. Okay, we got everything all done up. All the oil levels are topped off. The uh, purge things are tightened up. So that all the air is out, both sides are filled to the maximum capacity. Now we're ready to purge the system. I left this wheel off purposely so that I could show you the bypass valves. Before you do anything, after you change the fluid, the first thing you want to do is rotate these bypass levers. And they're hard to see, but you can feel in there. But I'm going to try to get in here where you can see one. So it's a little lever and it's right in here. It's a little lever right there, a little plastic lever. And all you gotta do is rotate it to the right, just like that. I hope I got that on camera. But that little plastic level now, lever is now to the right. And we have to do that on both sides. So now I'll come over here. This side still has, has the tire on it because I put it back on. I only did left the other side off to show you, but maybe, well, let's see. Maybe you can even see it better right here. Right in here. Oh, well, uh, for you to see it, it's hard to do. If I can get in there with my hand. No, I can't, I can't do it and show it on camera because the hole that you see it through is also not where I need to stick my hand. Well, maybe not where we can do it right here. Right there. Oh, well, that's it right there. That's the lever on this side. And both of them need to be turned to the right. So I'm going to turn that one to the right. And then uh, I'll show you the procedures for purging the system. Once you have those bypass valves turned to the right hand side, what you want to do is get on it and start it up, let it warm up. Then you're going to want to bring in both these handles with it jacked up off the ground, just like this, move them forward for a few seconds, move them all the way to the rear for a few seconds, all the way to the forward for a few seconds, and back and forth, do it at five or six times with the bypass valves turned all the way to the right side. So we're going to do that real quick so you can see. Make sure it's jacked up off the ground. You don't want to be moving around. Okay. Now that you 
you've done that with the bypass, bypass valves turned to the right, you want to turn them both back to the left, which is your operating position, and do the same thing over it. So. Come in here and check your hydraulic levels. Make sure they're still at the top of these two lines on each side. If they're not, add some. If something happened and it disappeared, then you're going to want to go through and repurge everything again, moving these, removing these uh, bleeder bolts out on each side and uh, filling it back up until it's coming out, and then locking them back off, and then redoing that purging process again. Also, make sure there's no leaks. Nothing you did caused any leaks. And then, um, I guess, test drive it. Hey, I'm, I'm glad y'all watched the video. I hope y'all learned something or enjoyed it. If you got a Kubota zero turn, you can change your own transmission fluid now and save yourself some money. Um, please uh, subscribe, like. It helps with the algorithm. I'm trying to grow the channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. And um, have a good day. Enjoy your mowing.